Okay, in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how I created this very, very simple scene here using V-Ray. Um, I'm going to go into some of the attributes of the materials and I'm going to use the VR mats to do this. So, uh, okay, well, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a few of the tricks. I'm going to reset everything. Um, not save the scene. And there we go. So I've reset that and I have nothing in here now. So the first thing to do is, as usual, we're going to create a plane. So standard primitive plane. Let's click it in here and I'm going to set this to 4 meters by 4 meters. And I'm going to set the segments to 1 and 1. Okay, so that's um, this part. So next thing to do is convert this to an editable poly. So convert to editable poly. And I'm going to grab the two edges at the back here and just extrude those up. So uh, just grab the move tool and just pull those up. So let's get the Z value there and put three on that. Okay, so there they are. Um, all right, that'll do. Now, next thing to do is just pop my teapot in the center. So create teapot. And just pop that there. Now, I'm also going to create some V-Ray lights on this. So let's create some standard V-Ray lights here. So let's put one there, another one here. Uh, I'm going to rotate them slightly. And of course, I'm going to move them up. So grab that, put them there. And next thing to do is very quickly just create a camera in here. So let's see what we got. And just move this up. I'll switch over to the camera now. And there's my scene. So I'm going to bring that into there maybe. Okay, so slightly different to what we've seen earlier, but that's good enough. All right, so with that done, we're going to run off a quick test render on that and see what we have. Okay, so not much going on there. Um, the scene is a bit bright. So I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to get into my camera and look at its properties here. So with its properties selected, uh, let's see, where we go. So exposure control, currently at 6 EV, so I might just... Uh, I put that to 8 and see what it looks like. Grab my render view there. So it's looking still very bright. Try the other way. No, nope, definitely wrong. Okay, so it's sitting there at an EV of 10. Um, which is good enough to start with, I think. Now, um, what we're going to be doing is using some materials to basically bring this scene out a bit. So it's going to drop that down, and what I'm going to do is, first of all, fire up the material editor, as you see it here, and uh, we're going to use VR mats on this one. So I'm grabbing a VR mat from here, so V-Ray VR mat material, when you double click on that, you can then come in here and assign a file to it. So these are already loaded into my material libraries. So I've got a VR mat library here, and uh, let's see, let's try ceramic, and I'll go for ceramic orange on this. So that's a nice simple one. Uh, you can see it there. And if I apply this to my teapot, so a couple of ways of doing this, we can simply grab the output node and drop it on like so. Or another handy one is to come into the V-Ray or the 3DS scene, select the object, and assign material to selection. So I think I might have gone too far there. Let's pop that on there. Um, that is that done. And if I do a quick test render on this now, we should see a considerable improvement on the teapot. And there it is. So that's the teapot, and you can see the lights reflecting in there. So that's coming up pretty well so far. So I'm going to stop that. 
Now, the next thing is to start putting some materials on these various areas here. So I'm going to start by putting another VR mat onto uh, the ground. So what I'm going to do is select, um, let's see, something near the ground one there. So we've got grass, we've got gravel. Okay, I'm going to try a gravel one here. I'm going to turn that on. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, that's the gravel texture. And what I'm going to do is apply that then to the scene. So if I apply this on now, it's going to apply to everything in here, which is really not what I want. But I'm just going to run this anyway just to see what I get, and I'm going to fix up the rest of it. All right, now, what we can see here is clearly a problem. So the gravel has come down onto the floor, but I'm getting this big mad stretch all along here. And the reason for this is down to the UVWs on this particular shape. So I'm going to stop that. Now, this is a problem for us because any texture I put onto this now is going to be you know, just basically just drawn out, extruded up uh, against it. So we need to fix that. Now, to do this, what we can do is grab a polygon like this. Um, and then we can, well, we can detach it first of all. We'll do this for simplicity. We're going to detach it off. So just going down through these areas here, I'm going to detach. I'm going to call this wall A. Nash A, okay. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to detach this. I'm going to call it wall B. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm going to rename this to the floor. All right, that might become useful later on. Now, um, so let's just get a look at wall A here. So I've got that. There's my wall A. You can see it's selected here. Currently editable poly. In order to fix the this problem here, what I need to do is reset the UVWs on that. So I come into the modifier list here, scroll down towards here, and we get UVW map. All right, so it's not doing an awful lot at the moment, but it is set to planar. So if I run off another test render, let's see what we have. Okay, no, no change there at all, so it's going to stop that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to box. And if I come in here, now you can see it is mapping it correctly. All right, and that is in essence what we're trying to achieve here. So when you have this kind of stretching situation, just run, uh, just pop a UVW map on it, and then make the correct selection in here. Now it does allow you to do some other things. You can change other attributes in here if you like, uh, and it will have other types of effects. So that's that one. I'm going to do the same over here. I'm just going to attach a UVW map to this, and see how it goes. So UVW map. Da -da -da. There it is. And again, just run off another quick render of this. Okay, again, what did I not do? I have never made the setting. Come in here, change the box, render again. And there we go. All right, now these are obviously not the materials I want, so I'm going to put some other materials on each of those walls, and we're going to make some adjustments to them. So that's the gravel material. So I'm going to bring in another one, and let's see what we use. I'm going to try some perhaps some brick. So let's go to VR mat brick. Uh, let's try this one. I'll try that one just to be different. Okay, so we've got this kind of yellowish brick here. And let's see, let's pop that away. Okay, I'm going to put it onto wall A. So I've got wall A selected and I've got the material selected. So I can come in here and simply use assign material to selection. And that can be quite helpful as well. So let's do a quick test render on that and see it working. So that's that in there. Let's stop that one. And now we'll select another material uh, for the other wall. So new V-Ray mat there. Let's see what we put onto this one. Um, woods and laminates. Why not? Let's see. Oh, herringbone. There we go. 
so a herringbone pattern. So I'm going to select wall B over here. I have this material selected, assigned to selection, and we're going to run off a test render just a one more time. Okay. Now, um, that all worked well. Uh, it's still obviously rendering it off. But when it comes to scaling this stuff, it can be a little bit problematic because when we look at these materials here, we find that we don't actually have any controls on them. So in order to scale those materials, um, we need to take a slightly different approach. And again, it's going to be on an object modifier. So I'm just going to drop that away. Uh, the materials are assigned, so I'm not really going to use that much anymore. So if I grab wall B, for instance, what I can do is come in here and go to UVW transform, UVW XForm transform. And by changing the tiling values here, we can change the scale on the material as we see it. So I'm looking at, maybe I'll try the brick, because that's easier to spot. Um, I'm just going to pop that modifier on again, UVW XForm. And I'm going to change the tiling to 2. Let's make it dramatic. Let's go for 5 and 5 all around. There we go. So a bunch of 5s in here now. Now when I hit the render, you can see the pattern is much, much smaller. All right. So when you want to scale your materials, it's um, generally a good idea to yeah, use the UVW um, transform there. Uh, simple, effective, and uh, it allows you to use vismats in pretty much anything. Other things we can do, let's just stop that. Um, under transform, we can change the rotation. So if I change this by, say, 45 degrees, um, and hit render on that, we're going to see the bricks heading up the way. Off like that. Maybe I'll change this back to 2 and 2, maybe, so we can see what's going on there. Stop. Two, two, two. So there you go. So you have a lot of control on your materials and how they behave uh, by using between the UVW map and the UVW transform. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, good luck with it.